This is Pete Fletzer, and welcome to a show that we call Streaming Star Wars. If you're a longtime listener, you may remember this show from a few years ago. The premise has always been to be sort of a sports radio type of conversation about the Disney Plus Star Wars shows and, and really all the Star Wars current events. Well, I'm excited to let you know that it's back. As part of the new and improved ATG cast featuring both my show, Around the Galaxy, and my good friend Nick Milkey's podcast of the Wills, we've teamed up to bring you streaming Star Wars live every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel. You'll find the link to that in the notes below. And then what we do is we take the raw feed from that show and we put it right here in the podcast feed as another weekly entry into our Star Wars conversation. I urge you to join us on Friday nights live if you can on the YouTube show. You'll hear that the chat is really active and we bring your comments into the conversation. It's really a lot of fun, and it's a great way to wrap up the week. If this happens to be your first visit with ATG Cast, well, welcome aboard. Please make sure to subscribe, because not only do you get streaming Star Wars Replay on Mondays, you'll also get our weekly one-on-one -on -one Star Wars interview show on Thursday. Whether it's around the galaxy, getting to know the people behind the fandom, or Podcast of the Wills, which is a canon study conversation with a guest taking a deep dive into how the story speaks to them. And then on Saturdays, you get Disturbances in the Force, a five-minute news digest bringing you all the Star Wars news of the week with no spin, no clickbait, just the facts to keep you up to date on all the happenings in the Star Wars galaxy. There really is. There's, there's a ton going on. You got to try to do your best to keep up with it if you can. But before we get started, I need to remind you to follow us on all your social media channels at ATGCast. And please check out ATGCast.com to learn more about the shows, find past episodes, find links to merch, and information about how to support the stream as an ATG cast patron. So now, without further ado, streaming Star Wars episode 2201 after these messages. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the brand new streaming Star Wars. How's it going, Nick? Great to see you, man. Good evening, sir. How are you? Uh, you know, I am pretty, pretty good. It's a Friday night. I'm hanging out talking Star Wars with a good friend. Can't can't really beat that. It's hard to beat, man. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, cheers to you. Let's start off with the old streaming Star Absolutely. Wars tradition. Cheers. There you go. If you, drink them if you got them. Join us uh, in the... Uh, Partaking in some, I'm um, drinking some brown looking tonight. So, uh, as am I, as as per my usual brand, you know, <laughs> whis whiskey and ice gets the job done. It gets the job done. So, hey man, we are doing streaming Star Wars, which you know, I I need to give props to to my good friend Dave Amelotti, who he and I started the show. I don't even know, like two years ago, maybe. I don't know. Uh, whenever it was, we did it, and it was a ton of fun, and. Well, the Book of Boba Fett just kind of felt like it was the right time to to bring this show back, especially in light of the the new combination of Around the Galaxy and Podcast of the Wills that we're we're bringing together on ATG Cast. How are you feeling about doing streaming Star Wars? You know, this is one of those things. Like I made this joke a couple times along the way. I was on Bro Axiom a couple months ago, and I said it felt like I was finally invited to host Saturday Night Live when you get to <laughs> hang out with that crew on Sunday night. You've kind of made the big time. Um, streaming Star Wars is another one of those great ones. I watched almost all those episodes that you guys did back then, and I loved the show. I loved the format. I loved the conversations. And as I watched it, I thought, these are the kinds of sh kinds of shows that I want to do as yeah. I was doing Podcast of the Wheels, but in a different way than I'm doing it now. So it was another aspirational, like, I love that kind of show. I want to do a show like that. And now here I am doing it with you so I, yeah. i'm living the dream as they say no it's it's awesome i'm excited to have you for for people who may not be familiar with streaming star wars sort of the 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 overall sort of approach to the show is that we uh we talk about the news of the week we'll hit all the star wars news but most of it's going to be about some of the streaming shows coming off disney plus mm -hmm. there's so many conversations and look we we don't intend to be that that late you know that 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 early breaker first review you're not gonna probably see us doing reaction videos but we're we want to talk about all the, the great things that are happening in the star wars universe star wars world <laughs> um i want to shout out we've got a bunch of friends watching in the chat right now hanging out we are excited that everybody is here that you're spending some time with us on friday night i hope everybody has drinks whatever makes you happy and comfortable and relaxed on a friday to hang out talk boba fett talk streaming star wars if you get a chance 
throw the link to the feed in your Twitter feed, send it out. Let's get some more friends in here hanging out um, and talking to us. There was one other important comment, and now I feel like I've lost it. Um, <laughs> well, Michael Nip said, Nick, three nights a week is what the people deserve. It's true. Um, it's very I don't know what true. we're punishing them for, but I also don't disagree. <laughs> and then uh, Matthew said, Nick is at least back in full beard mode. So, yes, well, I also yeah. agree wholeheartedly with that. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm glad to see it back. I'm glad to see it back. <laughs> it, it is good to be back. But <laughs> it's good to be with all our friends hanging out tonight. And it's good to be able to talk Book of Boba Fett. And, you know, just there's a lot going on right now in Star Wars. I mean, it, it really is a, a crazy time. And, you know, it's it's funny. It, Nick and I talk quite regularly uh, during the week. And, and I was putting together the news and I said, boy, it's been kind of a quiet news week. And then <laughs> bam, 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 all this stuff hit. And um, it, it seems that Star Wars doesn't slow down when when the series drops. And we, you know, we had... We, we came we, we had the second episode already of Book of Boba Fett. We're, we're two in. And mm -hmm. um, before I get your thoughts on it, we uh, we ran a little Twitter poll and I want to yes. I want to share a little bit of Absolutely. that. So we asked the good people of the Twitterverse, um, you know, what did they think of this episode of Book of Boba Fett, episode number two, chapter two? Was it better than the first? Was it the same as the first? Was it not as good at the, as the first? And overwhelmingly, people seem to like this episode much, much better. Um, and then the other question that I asked, uh, that we asked was, did chapter two of the Book of Boba Fett change your opinion of the series? And interestingly, um, you know, a lot of people were already all in, and I, I don't mm -hmm. know how much of that has to do with the fact that it's a new Star Wars show and we're going to watch it no matter what. <laughs> I do feel like there's a bit of that. Uh, but I was actually surprised to see that 41%, now this was over 300 people that filled out this uh, poll in, in 24 right. hours. Um 41% of people said they're more excited now after this particular episode. Nick, what was your take on the episode? Uh, I have to admit that I was a little bit on board with the people that were even more excited. Um, mm. You know, of course, you and I talked during the week in text and that kind of thing. But kind of my general mood coming out of last week was by no means that I disliked it. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit underwhelmed after the first watch. Um, and I think that actually is attributed to exactly what you talked about. Robert Rodriguez said in print, we're going to blow everybody's minds. We're going to exceed right. expectations. And knowing that smart people and media people don't let people say those kinds of things, <laughs> right. the fact that it made it to print meant like, oh, like there may, I bought into that hype a little bit. So, of yep. course, that carried me into that first episode. But upon a second viewing, upon, you know, one smart person on Twitter somewhere going, dude, it's a prelude, like there's six more episodes to come. I yeah. settled in and went, well, of course I didn't dislike it. But watching this one on Wednesday did make me even more excited for the series going forward. I, I do have to say, and I think this was one of the challenges, and this was part of the review that I put in uh, my Fanta Tracks review uh, last week, was I think coming out of Mandalorian with – whether it was the Grogu reveal, which will never be topped. Well, never sure. say never. I never thought we would top the <laughs> I am your father, but there we are. Um, but and, and even the first episode of the second season of Mandalorian, which brought back Cobb Vanth and the Boba Fett armor and then ended with mm -hmm. Boba Fett watching watching uh, the Mandalorian disappear into the sunset. There was none of that at all with that with this episode. There was nothing uh, the first episode. There was nothing mm -hmm. that was kind of they that set the internet on fire. Um, and I think with the second episode, that was where you had really your first reveal. I mean, to see the huts, to see mm -hmm. you know some of the 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 Boba Fett in action, and to all the all the great stuff that we saw from the. Uh, from the flashbacks that had a little bit more of the had a lot more of the callbacks and the fan service, but in a really positive way. And I would recommend, I don't know if you've got a chance to do this or not, but last night in preparation for the show, mm -hmm. put the kids to bed, uh, grabbed my drink, <laughs> put, put on the headphones, sat in the family room with the big TV. And I watched episode one and two together as one episode. Okay. And honestly, it feels like it's one 90 minute movie because it okay. really takes that arc. And I think that mm -hmm. that's one of the things that, that was so satisfying about this second episode. And, and we'll talk some of the details, some of the things that blew us away yeah. about it. But I think the reason it worked was because the arc was completed. It went from made it out of the Sarlacc pit, became essentially a prisoner of the Tuscan Raiders, earned the respect, 
show the pri- the tribe that he was there to mm-hmm. support them. And then they, he get, gains full acceptance. That's your full arc. And you sure. didn't get that in the first episode. So when you walked off the first episode, you were like, where's the thing? Where's the, where's yeah, the big Yeah, you're piece? waiting for the next part. I can totally understand that. Well, And I want to pull up one of these comments that relates to the Twitter poll and what we kind of start out with um, from our good friend Danny. Danny mm. said, honestly, I'm having a hard time getting into Book of Boba Fett. She said, I haven't really rated anything higher than a seven. And even my worst episode of Mando was a seven and a half. Mm. Here's what I want to say. And this is kind of what you and I talked about before we came on air tonight is that's a perfectly legitimate opinion to have, Danny. And I agree with you. I came out of the I think I came out of the first episode and I was kind of like a six or a ten. It didn't mean mm-hmm. I hated it. But we're allowed to be constructively critical of things. And there's a comment that she made as a follow up that I think we'll talk about a little bit more later. But she said, my issue is everything kind of feels like inside baseball, especially Mm -hmm. for books and comic fans. I feel like I should know things that I don't. So it feels like it's going over my head. And we're going to circle back to that um, in a little bit. But I did want to bring up that, you know, it's okay for us to be a little uncertain. It's something new. We all have expectations. Um, But I think that that's totally fair. And I love the idea that you said of it feeling more complete, putting the first and second episodes together. Yeah, it's a it's a fun way to watch it. And I think, you know, even when I went back and started watching some of Mando um, in preparation for Book of Boba Fett, I think a lot mm-hmm. of people did the, the rewatch. It, it does feel a little bit more complete. You don't. Re- and, and I think Book of Boba Fett so far in this kind of we'll end up talking a little bit more about in the prediction section of our show. But it definitely feels like a book, like in the classic right. sense. Like I feel like I am literally reading chapters of a book. You start with one scene and then you get you know, some background and then you move the story forward a little bit. And what's interesting is how little of the current story we really have. We have like Mm -hmm. virtually, I mean, I, I haven't done the math, but of the 90 minutes we've gotten so far, I'd say maybe 15 at max have been focused on where Boba and Fennec are today. Correct. So so what were some of the things that, that stood out to you in this particular episode? Um, I have to say, the big thing that stood out to me the most, the big thing that I loved the most was the Tuscan story arc. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, of course we loved the reveal of black Kersantan. We liked seeing the hut show up some very classic star Wars things. But for me, the emotional aspects of that Tuscan story arc. And honestly, I kind of said last week, as I was watching the first episode, I wasn't sure that I wanted or cared to have an emotionally developed Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. And that sounds kind of weird to say, because I also didn't want him to just be a mindless killer, which is ironic because that's what we've said that the Tuscans were for the last 42 years. Um, But in this episode, and of course what they're tying in with the flashbacks to him as a kid. And, you know, the, I loved last week, one of the big wows last week was the flashback to him holding Django's helmet in the middle of that Geonosian arena. Um, I'm really here for an emotionally developed Boba Fett and especially looking at trauma because we all, you know, in real life deal with issues of trauma and some of that kind of stuff. And so narratively, they're looking at that. I love the commentary on native and indigenous peoples. Like it really is some powerful storytelling that while is fun for our space adventure has a real one-to-one connection to the world that we live in. And I think it's, I appreciate that Disney and, you know, especially the creators of this particular story are making those choices. It, it's it's funny because I think one of the things that I saw, one of the, the comments, one of the thousands of comments on Twitter <laughs> was um, somebody commented on the fact that the Tuscans were shown to be so brutal and so, so frankly, just, just animalistic and evil in uh, Attack of the Clones, right? I mean, they... They stole Shmi. They mm-hmm. literally murdered Anakin's mother. And now we're trying to get to a point where we're feeling some sort of remorse and some sort of empathy for them as a tribe uh, or as a people. And, um, you know, there have always been fan theories. And it's an interesting fan theory about the uh, about, you know, somehow they were manipulated by the dark side to pull Anakin over the edge. But I don't even think it's so much. I mean, I think we need to get comfortable, and this is a probably a very touchy subject in, in many cases, but we need to get comfortable with the fact that they're, they are an indigenous people who are a culture that's based on on violence and mm-hmm. and I don't know about based on violence, but certainly not afraid to to 
to attack and to be violent when when they feel like they're being invaded. And mm-hmm. so um, I, I think I think that's something that I'd like people to to get comfortable with is it's not just yeah they, they may have not been manipulated by the dark side they may right. have been really pissed off that the Lars family put a plantation right in mm-hmm. the middle of their land and they're going to respond to that. That's right. When you look at, and of course you can draw, I actually thought there were a lot of really neat historical contextual tie-ins to, again, the Native Americans in this country that we live in. Um, You know, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, there's stories of when the first rail lines were going from the east to the west and they were riding through those Native American territories. Mm -hmm. It was a feature on a lot of those passenger train rides that rifles were handed out and people were allowed to shoot buffaloes out the window Yep. as they drove through some of those states. And they didn't stop and collect the buffaloes. They just kept going. And right. while that's not exactly what was happening in this episode, we get people shooting out of a train, shooting banthas, yep. shooting you know natives as they pass through. And it was a defensive thing. But there's still a one-to-one correlation to some of that. But also the assimilation and the change, whether it be good or bad. We, um, in this country, with the Native Americans, the introduction of whiskey to the Native Mm -hmm. American culture has had a long, difficult history ever since people back in the 1800s introduced that. Um, Cars, you know, those indigenous people here were given new things. And we see that in this episode. We see them talking to Boba and Boba saying, you know, you have weapons and now they have speeder bikes and now they have, you know, the deal that was struck with the pikes yep. um, about paying passage so that they could come through. That happens in that time with Boba, but we see it again later with Mando because Mando right. pays them the goggles so that he gets passage through when he's with Toro Calican. And that whole, like it changes the culture and it creates a new way forward so that people can evolve because prior to that, that was all they knew was to right. raid and kill and be defensive if nothing else. So, right. um, I think it's a really great storytelling arc um, in order to tie in, you know, something that we're very familiar with and to see that also develop Boba. Boba becomes accepted into that culture. Yeah, I'm going to throw another comment out there that's that's related in that um, there's a lot of commentary that um, that Boba, this isn't the Boba Fett that I expected. You know, of course, I mean, Mm -hmm. it's similar to The Last Jedi. This isn't my Luke Skywalker. This isn't my Boba Fett. But if you, you know, if you go back and again, in preparation for the show, I I looked up which were the Boba Fett episodes from Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. And even as a child, he always stuck to his word. He always, he always felt a certain moral obligation to do what he said he would do and also not do what wasn't necessary to do the job. I mean, when they tried to kill uh, Mace Windu, I under- you, you got to kind of understand that revenge, right? I mean, he literally watched this guy chop his dad's head off. Um, you can understand the revenge motivation, but when it meant taking out other people, he was not comfortable with that. And then he made a commitment to to finish the job when um, he was part of the uh, a train heist. Um, similarly, it wasn't a train heist, yeah. but it was a... a I guess it kind of was a train heist with the, mm-hmm. the I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, yeah. But he, he he made the commitment. I'm gonna I'm gonna see this through, and he did. And he did the same thing when he found Mando and Grogu. He, he right. made the deal. I'm going to, for, in exchange for my armor, I will make sure that Grogu gets to where mm-hmm. he needs to be, and followed through. And this is why when he says I'm going to rule with respect versus fear. Right. It's really it's already been a part of his core mm-hmm. for sure. And that's the and that I think also circles back to what I said initially in the first episode was I didn't know how emotionally developed of a Boba Fett I wanted because the only Boba Fett I had gotten prior to this, for the most part, was bounty hunter, one liners. Right. He's no good to me, dead, you know, those kinds of things. And Andy said it um, up here in the chat just a minute ago. Um, he said the trouble with. The trouble is that Boba hype is tough to meet. Yep. What do we really need to know about Boba that isn't better than the image I have him in, in my head? Sprinkling, yep. sprinkling in through Mando season two was perfect. And so that's the thing. It's going to hit fans of a certain age a certain way because you and I and Andy grew up with that, you know, nine, six minutes of screen time, six lines, yep. whatever it is. Boba Fett, 
but other people grew up with Clone Wars Boba Fett, just like you're describing, and they got him more as a kid and have a different connection. So I really am excited to see that development, and I think it's going to lead us in some place areas that I was more interested in than initially when we were told, hey, we're going to get a Boba Fett series. And I think it's interesting to the evolution of a storytelling process, right? I think, um, you know, there was a lot of talk that there was the Kenobi series was going to be a film and the Boba right. Fett series was going to be, was a, going film. To be a film mm-hmm. to be able to do it over seven parts to do it. in what will end up being probably somewhat around five hours gives you a lot more of that room and you can't do six weeks or seven weeks of, Go on a back, go on a go on a, a mission, kill, go to the next thing, go to the next thing, and that would get boring. Um, it's the same kind of mentality of of people who want to see a Darth Vader series where he's just a badass and kills everybody. That's boring. That's not. That's video game. It's a lot of fun to play as a video game. I mean, the Bounty Hunter video game was as Django Fett was fun, um, but if you're you you can't get invested in a character that way. does bring to mind a really interesting question is this an easy marketing opportunity for disney right like what drove it right because we know that the reason the mandalorian was created was because they said no you can't do boba fett right so they created a boba fett like character mm-hmm. well now they have boba fett they <laughs> see that that these work do you what are we going to get from this and where's, where's this all going to go? And that's, I think uh, it's a very valid question. What is, what are we supposed to get from this show? That's, it's a group. Uh, well, and I, I think I we thought about, up, you know? Yeah. Well, and I want to pull up what Phoenix night flame said. He said, to be honest, star Wars, or they said star Wars might be better suited for the small screen. It allows for time to expand and explore the characters. The sequel yep. trilogy only had maybe seven hours for how many characters book of Boba Fett has five plus hours for one. And that's an yep. excellent point. Yep. And that's something I was on a show Tuesday night, shout out to my friends at the deuce cast extra talking about book of Boba Fett. And that was the question I posed. Cause those guys are all hardcore cinema movie buff people. Yep. And so I asked that question. I said, if the future of star Wars was only streaming series where you get to have these big expansions, somebody, you know, the article came out, I think last week, comparing it to you know a six hour movie and is that really you know six hour movies in chunks which you kind of said the first two episodes were like a good you know movie arc so i asked them especially as hardcore cinema folks what does that do for you and what they said and i agree with is there's potential there but it loses that key thing which is the communal experience the opportunity Mm. to have a i'm your father moment in a theater with a bunch of people for the first time yeah to have the avengers end game you know, big reveal or all the women heroes showing, you know, those stand up and cheer moments that we had some in uh, far from home or no way home a couple of weeks yep. back. Like, so the communal part of that and star Wars is nothing, if not about community, speaking right. of community, if you're watching the live chat, grab the link, tweet it out, share it with your friends. We'd love some more for some more folks to jump in here and join this conversation with us. But I think that's a great question. And you talk about marketing I think one of the true tests and you and I have both said this in regards to our fathers, our fathers are watching these shows. My mother has started watching star Wars shows because of baby Yoda. Yep. Baby Yoda brought her in. And after the first episode of book of Boba Fett, my dad texted me and said, I really liked that. Also, I like that it's bringing your mother into star Wars. Mm -hmm. So from a marketing standpoint, most of the people that are going to get hooked on these things are not as deep of a level of fans as you and I are. Yes. But that's what's showing and reporting those numbers, like you said, of how it's being viewed is telling that it's working. It is working. But you do bring up a great point. And and Danny brought it up in her comment. And and let's get to that Mm -hmm. with this episode more so than the first one. I mean, the first one didn't really have anything. I mean, it had a variation on the expected story of. Boba breaking out of the um, breaking out of the Sarlacc pit and, and from there. But this episode had not only did it have reference to a comic book character, this Black Christanton, there uh, it is right there. Uh, it also had reference to a deleted scene with Cami and mm-hmm. Fixer. Which yep. how did they find people? Are, are those like <laughs> is that deep fake? I don't understand. Like it looks the actors they got <laughs> there were fantastic. But they did also, a great job. 
you also got the Pikes, which Correct. which come from Solo. And it's funny, I was talking to a friend of mine who's kind of a Star Wars fan. He's like, oh, that's right. I forgot all about Solo. So mm -hmm. the question that I pose to you and, and yes. to the people watching and listening, um, what is the impact of of other media here now in Star Wars? What does this mean that you can get a comic book character? This is, I think, is this the first time we've seen a comic book character come to life on screen? I think it is, and that was a question that I've heard posed on a couple of different shows earlier this week, um, is that, yes, as, you know, Cobb Vanth was the first Right, he was from Chuck Wendig's book. Character, right, yep. from the Aftermath books. He was the first original novel character mm -hmm. to be introduced. I mean, I guess... I mean, technically, Thrawn was introduced into animation before that, and True. that would. Have, but I think in live action, I think um, Cobb Vanth is the first. So yep. yeah, I think as far as I understand it, Black Crescenton, Santi, Black K, depending on if you're an <laughs> Afro reader or not. Um, I think that character is the first comic book to live action translation, which is neat. But as we said, when I watched it Wednesday morning the first time. Actually, really, when I watched it the second time, because I watched it at two o'clock when it dropped. No, I didn't. I watched it early with my daughter. Um, the first week I stayed up. I can't do that every week. Um, it's hard to do. It's very hard to do. But I didn't know that that was a comic book character when I watched right. it the first time. I was like, oh, that's a cool looking Wookiee. Yeah. And then like at 10 o'clock in the morning and I was at work and checking Twitter at some point and somebody was like, I can't believe they did that. And I was like, Oh crap, I have to, I missed something. What do I? <laughs> and so I'm not a comic book reader and you're right. not a comic book reader. No, I'm not. So I knew who Cammy and Fixer were because I grew up with the original trilogy and those deleted scenes are from lore. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's an interesting thing. And I sympathize with Annie, especially on that point of how much am I missing? And I feel like in this case, at this point, I think we got what we needed. Yeah. Because I don't know anything about Black K. And if he's going to show up in more of this, they're going to give me what I need. And it speaks to, and you've talked about this a lot before, Filoni and Favreau in particular are really good at weaving in some of that kind of stuff but it's still being accessible to people who have no familiarity. Like right. I don't feel like I'm missing anything seeing that. The other example I use is when my dad called me after the Ahsoka episode of Mando season two, Yep. he said, I really liked that Jedi with the two lightsabers. She was cool. Right. And that was right. all he had to say. Yep. But he had everything he needed to know. He didn't know what I knew, but it didn't, hurt his viewing of the rest of that season of Mandalorian. Yeah, I, I had the, a similar conversation with my father, uh, 70 something in uh, at the end of uh, at the end of the, the Ahsoka episode. And I walked him through Bo-Katan and Ahsoka and Cobb Vanth. And none of that was that important. And just this this week, my my dad sent me a, a text right after um, um, right after the right after he watched it and he said um he said i just I just saw the book of boba fett episode two kind of long so that was we're right. all saying they're mm -hmm. not long enough he's saying it's kind of long and then i told him i said the wookie was from the comic books the two humans in the bar were from a cutscene, um and his response was uh, quote see i wouldn't have gotten those but i didn't need to and I think right. he's right. So I, it's interesting. We have here a little bit of, of, of everything because I knew I had seen that Wookiee somewhere. But as I, I have talked to you about before, I'm not a comic book fan. And right. I actually take issue with comic books in that, <laughs> especially in this Black K character, for example. Sure. He has in doing our, our little bit of research uh, since we didn't know who he was. He's yeah. been in comic books with. Obi-Wan with Vader, with Boba yep. Fett, with Afra. Yeah. So he's he's almost done There's too a lot much. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so in my opinion, he's almost done too much. I think that's one of the things that comic books do. I think like War of the Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunters is really cool. But there's way too much. Like I feel like the, it's it's too jam packed. But I mean, that's the way comic books run. But I think the challenge Star Wars faces is that, you know, the, the Marvel Universe, the DC Universe, they can live with overpacked storylines because they have access to alternate timelines and you know different universes and 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 alternate tellings of the same story i think the fact that everything is now canon may end up mm -hmm. kind of they're going to back into something i think you were saying before you had seen some some tweets who, about people who were upset that black k didn't have the scar that he had in the comic right. book right um that he he got 
from Obi-Wan, right? From yeah. uh, probably mm-hmm. the scene right here. Um, right. But, you know, it, the, the live action take of this character, you know, similar to, you know, did uh, uh, Mysterio look exactly the same as he did in the comic book? Well, he looked pretty you know, close. We, ha- we have, you know, the issues about Ahsoka's, you know, her leku and, you know, yep. all the, uh, and I know that's the wrong word. Hera has leku. Ahsoka has a word I'm not coming up with yet, but um, <laughs> I want to throw a couple of things to the chat. One, this is why I love having this live audience with us and folks that are you know, smarter than I am. Um, JD may be right. I think Snap Wexley was actually the first novel character to have oh, a live action point. translation. Yes. Because he's Snap right. was in Aftermath. Yeah. Um, so Montrose, that's it. Thank you, Phoenix Nightflame. Um, <laughs> her Montrose did not look the same, of course, in live action that they did in animation. Totally fair. Right. Um, also, William said, um, where did it go? He said, whenever I'm told that people are from comics and novels, it makes me want to read more and dig deeper. Jerry said, it's a gateway to more stories with the characters if they want to learn. And that's right. what I love about it. Yep. Disney gives you the initial thing and then they go, if you think that's cool, here's a bunch of other stuff, but it's not required reading in order to hit what I call the big rocks, the movies and the TV shows, everything else. That's more of like a, if you really like that one, here's a way that you can go down an even deeper rabbit hole. Yep. Yep. I, I think, you know, one of the things that, was from Clone Wars that was from Solo that um, was really great to see and I think sets mm-hmm. up a lot of things is the Pikes and seeing them Correct. again. So my first response was, holy cow, it's the Pikes. They're back. And but and then my second question was, what are they doing on Tatooine? And so <laughs> it was it was really cool to see them. And as we see here in this, well, this picture. That connects to another Twitter poll question that you put up, if I'm not mistaken. It absolutely does. Hang on a second. So the, the question is, will we see kira because of the fact that the pikes and crimson dawn were connected yep. at the time of this show um interestingly 18.9 percent say no chance which i in star wars i nothing is no chance i'm sorry to say <laughs> nothing right. is no chance no one's um, ever really gone plus i also think there's no absolutely 100 percent because i mean the expectations for book of boba fett have already been I think kind of reset for many people, but sure. 50, and also 50, we know that only the Sith deal in absolute. So. <laughs> this is true. If we learn nothing else from the prequels, it's <laughs> that only the Sith deal in absolute. But fifty four percent of people think it's about a fifty fifty chance, and almost a quarter of people say probably yeah, probably we're going to see her. And I think a lot of it is directly related to the fact that we saw the Pikes, and that mm-hmm. sets up. I mean, you had the uh, the twins. Uh, right. the, the the huts coming to to lay claim. Uh, frankly, the um, I feel like the the Nightwind assassins looked very similar to some of the Crimson Dawn uniforms Correct. that we've seen in comic books. Um, I my my sense, and and we're kind of moving into the predictions section here, but my sense is it is Kira behind a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think? I, I think it's totally plausible, and I think that. All the things fit, you know, the little nods. I agree. The um, I called them the parkour ninjas before they had a name. But the prairie wind, or not prairie wind, night wind assassins. The prairie wind assassins, uh, they're a lot more laid back. Prairie, they're kind of, prairie wind, they're super chill. Um, the night wind assassins, which is apparently an original creation for this. It, there does not appear to be any reporting of them anywhere else before this. If there was, it would have been comic books and I wouldn't have known it. So it was fine. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there's a, you know, a comic book panel that somebody put up last week comparing, you know, the outfits they were wearing. And while not exact, you can see how they're pretty, you know, similar. Yep. Um, Somebody else said the red of the shields, you know, that, you know, we love when we can make color things out of Star Wars. Yep. Um, I love the memes that go around. I love when Star Wars is red. I love when Star (laughs) Wars is, you know, Jackson said Italian American early (laughs) this week. Um, But, you know, there's that stuff the pikes is a big connecting point to it because you know the outfit that that pike leader is wearing is very similar to the outfit that kira kind of despise disguises herself in when they go to um kessel in the solo movie yep and the one right the other comment that somebody made i love that the masks that the pikes wear pretty much exactly mirror their faces yes just with a mask like the little metal part so that their little whiskers can go in it um (laughs) Yeah, it was fun. But I think that I think the chances are maybe 
better than 50% that we get Kira in this. I think Amelia Clark is the right age. Yeah. I think, you know, we've kind of, we did the math earlier this week in a group text that, you know, 15 years or so. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been several years since Solo came out. And of course, so people have aged naturally, but that's not a big jump to do with makeup. It's not like we're trying to age, you know, Harrison back down to the right age. Yeah. So, you know, to go forward that way. It's easier plus, to age up than down. <laughs> plus, I mean, first of all, Jennifer Beale looks great. So obviously the Twilight healing baths are doing their job. So maybe Kira is yeah. spending some of that big, you know, mob leader money, you know, staying young and taking treatments. And <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of ways for it to work. And I agree with Jerry. We need more Amelia Clark in our life. So I, I would be excited to see Kira show up as one of the big, you know, because we were left not hanging with that in Solo, but a seed was clearly planted there. Yeah. And, and, and of course, I think, it's being paid off in the comic books. I'm sorry to cut you off. It is being paid off in the comic books a lot of ways. Yep. But not everybody reads the comic book. So I think they could put a bow on it here. But and but I think honestly, I think that's exactly I'm glad you, you said that, because I think that's exactly part of the reason why I think it's extremely likely. I feel like as now that they've made the connection to the comics for the first time, bringing a comic book character to life, showing that, yeah, and, you know, I think it was uh, Dan from Broaxium tweeted, mm -hmm. you know, comic book fans are being fed this week. And it's true. Right. Um, if that's the case, if they're starting to make those connections, then I better go catch up on, the, you know, War of the Bounty Hunters, because <laughs> I think it's, I think it's going to be very important. Um, well, jumping into the chat here for a yeah. second, um, our own Lando Calchrissian, Chris Ryans himself <laughs> said, is. I hope Kira shows up. Um, Framie had another great point. Didn't Shizor recently become part of New Canon? Plenty of crime to go yeah. around. Fett claiming his chunk of the action. Um, Matt Harrington, I love Matt, and Matt gets a shout out <laughs> for this because he's been tweeting it from the beginning. He said, You guys can take any character you want showing up, but I 100% guarantee Ooh, it will be guarantee. Harrison as a deep fake Han. He's calling his shot. So. All right, I, yeah, I I would take a I would take a big odds over under prop bet on that one. <laughs> D, DM us, uh, Matt. We'll we'll figure That's out. Right. Uh, Let's we'll get some Vegas going on that. Let's get some going on, that, one. Going on <laughs> that. Um, yeah, you know it's it's interesting. She's or I think so. I think what's really interesting too, and something to keep in mind, is that in one of the recent articles before Book of Boba Fett came out, we heard that the only thing we've seen so far was from the first episode. Well, now we know it's probably from the first three episodes right um space botox that's great right. brian um the um so the second half of the season is going to be uh, just they haven't shown us anything from the second half of the season and i mean i feel like the huts showing up first of all gotta say i don't think the huts have looked that good since <laughs> real world jabba from return of the jedi i never felt like the digital huts were able to pull it off but these guys right. were so good they were these were good huts and i will say for as much talk as many times if we were playing a drinking game on the amount of times we heard the word litter in yeah. the first two episodes of the show <laughs> yeah this litter right here whoever built that has worth every penny that they've gotten because <laughs> this shot shows it some but there's another wide shot where they're looking down that street yeah and that thing is bowed under <laughs> and the people holding it are struggling and i loved so much about how you know, they put those little details into it, but we get huts, Pete. We got huts. We in got this huts episode. and pikes in this episode. It's we really huts, remarkable. Pikes. We get a comic character. Like everybody's being fed this week. The biggest breadcrumb they left was when when Fennec said, "If you want to kill them, we have to get permission." Yes. Not a lot of people have talked about that. And maybe I'm just yep. missing it. Maybe I'm getting too involved in stupid arguments on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people have spoken about that. And honestly, that that's a that's big. If they, so first of all, they're considering it, right? Yeah. Fennec wants they're to kill anybody who gives it. Boba any shed. <laughs> and and but Boba's like he like the question is being pondered, which means who do they need permission from? And that's that's yeah. where we are. Well, and, and I saw um and I, I am not as familiar because we get the drop of Nal Hutta, which was an Easter egg. And he yep. said, you know, the twins are busy with the debauchery on Nal Hutta. We get Nal Hutta in the Clone Wars. And I've watched those episodes, but probably only once. And it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. yep. But there's a Hut Council. And what I saw today actually was the, um, the Nerdist video that Dan Casey did. And he kind of went through the Easter eggs for this episode. And at one point when that came up, they cut to a scene 
of like a hut council, which also felt like the council that Sam Jackson goes to in the Marvel movies, mm. um, you know, kind of everybody spread around. Is that who he has to go get permission from? But that's planning, you know, that contact or conflict. Yeah. Um, I do want to bring up, and this is maybe not an Easter egg, and I tweeted it out earlier this week, but Fanboy Cantina brought it up. Mayor <laughs> Mokshay's. <laughs> yes. Star yes. Wars is nothing if not tuckerization of names. And if Mokshay, Mayor Mokshay's is not Mayor McCheese, I will eat my Boba Fett <laughs> hat because <laughs> this is too good. And I did ask Pablo and I asked Matt Martin for comment on it. And so far we have not gotten any word back, but it has to be Mayor Mokshay's. Mayor I mean, McCheese. that came he from will Scott be Mayor Riffin. McCheese the rest of the time. Yes. Scott, Scott Riffin that. posted that. And I just, and then when I watched the episode again last night, I was <laughs> I, I I heard McCheese. That's what I heard. Yep. It was Mayor McCheese at that moment moving forward. Well, and so. and just as another nod in that one scene, um, with the mayor, we got something that we had only ever gotten in animation, which is the Ethorian with the translator, which yeah. I thought was really neat. You see it in that picture, and you get when you're watching it on screen, you get the dual thing. You hear the Ethorian voice in the background. Yep. And then you hear what we found out was Robert Rodriguez doing the galactic basic translation over the top of it. Yep. Um, and that was a fun little nod because we saw a ton of that in Rebels. At least that's where I remember seeing that. Yeah. Um, but the only Athorian we got before that in, you know, the OT was in Mos Eisley Cantina and it was just Athorian speak. So, um, right. yeah, Chris, you're welcome. <laughs> Mayor McCheese. <laughs> Mok Sh- Mok Chase. Yep, McCheese. All yeah. we need now is Sam Jackson saying, you know, it's French for Mayor McCheese. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah. I, I, honestly, that's got to be what it is. I mean, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, yeah. Oh, good point, Andy. The Tartakovsky Clone Wars introduced that translator concept. Yeah, that's right. Very, I'm int- much less familiar with that, so I, 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 I do bow love, to your knowledge. I love that they keep the sound that you, mm-hmm. now when you watch A New Hope, you hear it. Right. You actually yes. hear that mm-hmm. the, the tone that, that they use. That so. guttural kind of whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we could we could go for days. I do want to bring up one one <laughs> yeah. catch that, that you saw on Twitter that I think is worth mentioning. Because I think one of the things – there's been a lot of talk about um, some of the uh, choreography of some of the fights that hasn't been – great and honestly mm-hmm. i when i watched episode one again the fight between <laughs> boba and the uh the the female warrior it does yeah. this is the first time i felt like i could tell it was done with the uh the the uh what do they call it the 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 volume the volume thank you yeah. i was thinking mm-hmm. the vision i knew it wasn't the vision <laughs> um and so and uh, yeah i think some of it and look <laughs> tomorrow morrison 61 years old He's not. And I have a, <laughs> I have a comment about Tamora, and I don't. It's it's critical in the best possible way. But like you know, we see those things like when Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out. Like Harrison's there. Honestly, that movie is better than we give it credit for. Other than yeah. a couple of bad. Like honestly, the worst part is the CGI swinging through the trees. That's not Harrison. Mm-hmm. That's what's his name. Um, yeah. But there's a point when you realize like with an athlete or somebody who, you know, the comment years ago about Willie Mays in the outfield when he was a little bit past his prime and circling a fly ball, um, Tamura Morrison running and in the sand (laughs) and wearing those pointy shoes, Tamura Morrison running in that jumpsuit looks like any of my kids when they were babies running away from me with a dirty (laughs) diaper. That's that running thing that like, it's not quite working, but definitely. It's fantastic, and I don't care because I'm not being ugly critical. I'm just going, mm, that one didn't hold up as much as some of the others. Yeah. Well, there was a scene in this one very similar to uh, – um, and it was one of those things that I loved uh, when I saw uh, when I saw it revealed from um, – the episode of Mandalorian that was the second season that was um, that was directed by um, uh, Ron Howard's daughter. And I feel horrible that I can't remember her name right now. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. Bryce Dallas. Thank yep. you. Where she did a Apollo 13. A, yeah. The Apollo 13 shot for shot. And so then good. what you found on Twitter was this shot of when the Tuscans go after the downed train yep. from Lawrence. Of Arabia. If you haven't seen this and you're seeing this right now on, on the, um, uh, on the the video, I will put it in the the links to the audio version of the show. It's remarkable and it's brilliant, and it brings to life 
it just it, that what they were it, trying that, to do because this is well, from the painting such a, yeah yes and it's such a classic star wars star wars is nothing if not homage right star wars is you know i've said on my show a hundred million times um my favorite television show of all time is the west wing Right. And there's a great line in the West Wing in one of the episodes where Rob Lowe's character writes a speech for President Bartlett. And at the end of it, one of the other characters is talking to Rob Lowe about the speech and this line that he gave. And Rob Lowe uses the line. He says, good writers borrow from other writers. Great writers steal from them outright. <laughs> and that has always stuck with me because George Lucas himself borrowed from Kurosawa, borrowed from Spaghetti Westerns, borrowed from all of these things that have really, honestly, he brought them more to the public for than they were right. prior to that. Yep. Like he gave, you know, there's a great story that came out around the time of Visions about how Kurosawa's life was so impacted by George Lucas basically paying homage and opening the doors to more people to discovering him. Yep. And you get that with Favreau and Filoni because one, Filoni studied it lucas's feet yeah i think and i've said this before i think favreau might be our modern day george lucas 100%. he's a great storytelling he has a great storyteller he has an eye towards technology and advancing how they tell these stories yep and so to give nods to lawrence of, and robert rodriguez is a part of this too and let's not also overlook um steph green that directed this episode 100 yes, percent. yep like her direct, the stuff she's directed is not insignificant. Um, but like the homage to things like Lawrence of Arabia to pull up these great moments. Um, the other one that we talked about before we went on the air, Dean Cundy, who was the director of photography for this episode. Mm -hmm. I encourage anybody that's watching this or listening to this later, go to IMDb and look up Dean Cundy, C U N D E Y. Look at his resume of the things that he was director of photography on all the back to the futures. I mean, that's just the ones I can remember off the top of my head. And that's yeah. who shot this episode. And that's yep. why it looks the way it does. But that shot, when I saw it on Twitter, just blew my mind. It's, it's really wild. And again, it's just the, it, it brings it to life. I'm not even going to go into the, the people saying that there shouldn't be a train because clearly, a, and you know, look, I'm, I'm also going to say this, this is another uh, breadcrumb for Kira. There was a train in solo. There's a train in this. It's like, I feel like there, there's that direct connection. So, um, so listen, as we're, we're coming up to yeah. our, close to the top of the hour here, first of all, thank you to everybody for hanging out with us tonight. We are going to do this every single Friday, as long as there's a Disney Plus Star Wars series. We may end up doing a couple between the series, but 2022 has so much uh, in store for us uh, yep. coming up. And uh, you also can listen to this episode in our podcast stream. We were just talking about it as coming up. We're going we're gonna to put this in the podcast stream on Mondays so you can go and you can get prepared for the upcoming episode and when we do the predictions in a moment you'll see just how wrong we were um thursdays you're going to catch our uh, interview show and this mm -hmm. week it's going to be kyle katarn who is a youtuber and a fan film expert and the guy is a, a mandalorian expert had a ton of fun talking to him and then of course saturdays you're still going to get your star your disturbances in the force which we're uh, we're going to drop on saturday mornings just to keep you up to date on all the Star Wars news. But Nick, we are yes, looking at chapter three coming up just a couple days from mm -hmm. now. Where do you think it's going? What what can we expect in your mind from this episode? And then I'll give my thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I have a specific guess for chapter three in particular. I think I feel like the things I said to you before we came on, I think like for the time being, maybe for the next, maybe three episodes, cause we've got what five left. Oh, five um, yeah. Maybe for the next three episodes, I don't, I think we see less of the Tuscan arc. I think we kind of put a bow on that for the time being. Yep. I think the next three and Matt said this earlier in the chat, I don't know where it is, but he said, you know, he's ready for more of the present day, quote unquote, Boba, mm. you know, the flashbacks, What's the con? I think the next three episodes, certainly starting with this week, are going to deal with more of his present conflict. The huts, yep. Um, you know, what's going on with maybe holding on to that power. I really think they planted a seed with the mayor offering his piece of tribute, which was the advice of saying being the head of a family, which again, all of us immediately thought about the godfather, exactly. Um, yep. 
you know, I think that sets the scene for maybe the next couple of episodes. And so that may be the more present drama. I think the Tuscans will show up in the last two episodes again. And I have some thoughts you and I did around the galaxy right before Christmas. Yep. Um, we did a bunch of predictions. I made a big one. I have pivoted to maybe like a one, a one B on that prediction <laughs> yeah. um, for the end of the series, but we'll get to that, you know, in a couple of weeks. So I think my biggest prediction for this next week is um, less flashbacks. I think yeah. we're going to get a little bit more like maybe even the full episode in the present day, which would be interesting just thinking about other recent modern storytelling has a Game of Thrones vibe. Game of Thrones would spend certain episodes jumping from place to place to place, but every now and then you had an episode that was entirely set at, um, you know, the at the wall. The yep. um, That episode or Battle of the Bastards all took place in that one place. It didn't jump around. Right. I could see us having a next episode of all here, all in the present, something like that. This is see. This is why I love doing the show with you because I am slightly on the the other side. I think okay. we are going to. I think. I think the whole. At first, I was. I was of the mind as well that we were going to kind of move away from the flashbacks and spend more time in the present. I think because it's called the Book of Boba Fett, and because they've done such a great job of literally creating a video book of mm -hmm. of the style that they share. I think we're going to. I think we're going to see in this upcoming episode, I think we're going to see him rescue Fennec and go okay. and get it, steal his ship from Bob, uh, from Jabba the Hutt's palace. I think right. we're going to, I think our, our cameo character, this episode is going to be Jabba the Hutt. I think we're going to see him in, okay. come in, in this. And I think it's going to be them stealing the ship because we know that at some point he rescued Fennec he and then he got the ship before he got his armor, so he's still going to be Tuscan Boba, right? Absolutely, um, with the ship, mm -hmm. with the ship. So I think I think that's what we're going to get with this one. Um, and I do think I think it's going to be less flashback, though. I think it's sure. going to be fifty percent versus. Well, and that yeah. was one of the trailer things we got, and it wasn't in one of the main trailers, but it was in one of the yep. TV spots. We get the shot of him and Finnick on the top of the hill, kind of looking down towards Boba's palace. Yeah, but then there's the one. In the hangar where the right. ship like, is sitting it's a there, quick shot, and you if you if you and pause it, from, you can um, see the ship. The, the ship. Which yeah. video game is it a mirror of? Because that image came out as well. Oh, it is came it, from uh, Battlefront Two when they Battlefront they, Two. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, so yeah, so there's a mirror image of that. So I think you're exactly right. That's a great way to go, and it also plays with two things I saw in the comments earlier. Um, I think Framey said the timeline is still a little bit convoluted. We still have a little bit of we think we're here right. and we think the flashbacks are here. But you said it exactly right. At this point, he has his gaffy stick. He has his Tuscan robes and wrappings. But we know he gets the ship before he gets the armor. So we still have some play at work there. Yeah, we're still building the character that we got to today um, and it was interesting you know when re-watching episode one how it it almost teased that we were about to see the scene again from uh mandalorian by showing sort of the interior of the palace mm -hmm. and different things there um one last question for you as it relates yep. to predictions they have made a very deliberate uh cut to multiple times to young boba and right. to camino do you mm -hmm. think we're going to get any sort of depth there or do you think that's just sort of a nod to where he came from i mean as i i tweeted you know he was born on an oceanic planet and he was reborn on a on a desert planet do you on, think that's what it is or it used you... to be an oceanic planet which yeah. is also interesting that was an interesting little um i love that historical yeah. drop and in connection to your question i do want to bring up this question for or this comment from william hardy uh william who's a good friend of the bombad <laughs> cast he said boba needs to stop sleeping and go to therapy um boba <laughs> He's not is wrong. working <laughs> Boba's working things out. And we see that with the vision quest, the peyote lizard, as we're calling it. Yep. Um, he's working that stuff out. So tying into your question, I think we certainly could get another reused shot or maybe a deleted shot from one of the prequels of young Boba, young um, Daniel Logan. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. I think there's the potential before this is over with to see actual Daniel Logan as an in-between era Boba mm. tied to a Clone War or something, some other flashback moment, some other thing. Of course, people are begging for Omega. Um, mm. You know, we have, you know, there's a lot of pieces there, but um, I think that we could get something else that ties to Boba's childhood because this is what we know. 
Boba, and to go back to also at the beginning of the show, my comments about an emotionally developed Boba. We have Boba Fett dealing with trauma. Right. Childhood trauma, those shots were very intentional of you know, Boba Fett starship or Jango Fett at the time starship flying away and him watching out the window and putting his hand up yep. as a part of that vision quest. Like this is somebody who's dealing with being left. This is a person who's dealing with, and that's why I think favorite Star Wars trope of mine, found family. Yep. Boba finds his family at the end of this episode in the Tuscans and in these in this tribe. Yep. Um, but I think we could get some more of that. I think that's a way too long way of answering your question. No, no such thing as too long, Nick. It's just fine. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think it's. Um, I, I think we're going to see some more connections. I think. Um, I think you're right. I, I, it is really, it's interesting. It's just these little subtle, subtle thing. You know, I've said it a thousand times. Um, Dave Filoni does not waste a frame. That's and right. So no filler, no filler at all. You can, you can't spell filler without Filoni, but you can, <laughs> you know, you don't need it filler, but watch that. What, you know, again, these little cuts, these little things that you notice the second time around when you watch it, you sort of, it glazes over and you catch it. But when you watch it the second time, when he's running, sort of watching the mm-hmm. ship take off, you know, like he's he's left alone again. And what we know from the Clone Wars is he he didn't have friends that were clones. He was right. his only family he, was Tonwi and and uh, Jango Fett. Mm-hmm. That was it. And but we don't Absolutely. know what the Omega connection was. And that's an well, interesting. Let me, let me ask you a very nuts and bolts question as sure. we're getting towards the end here. First watch. When a new episode of anything drops, Mm -hmm. do you first watch it just to consume it? Or when you watch it the first time, are you already trying to think about deep, deep cuts? Or do you save that for us? That's hard because obviously we can only control so much of where our brain runs as we see things. But I'm fascinated by the process and certainly people who know way more about Star Wars and the deep canon and things like that, or even people who have star wars jobs Mm -hmm. can they watch a first episode of something new and go holy crap that was fun and then the second time they watch it i'm more likely to watch it a second time with a pad and a pen yeah but the first time i really do even try not to have my phone and not get distracted and just go let me take in this first one what is your pete process yeah my process is i i set an alarm and i i watch it early in the morning before Mm -hmm. anybody wakes up that's twitter self-defense right uh, what, well, the, yeah, that's exactly where I was going with it. I have to. I watch it so that I make sure that I can't be spoiled. I don't watch it. I don't pick up the phone. I don't do anything. I just go straight to to watching the episode. And then, and, and sometimes, honestly, um, there were a handful of Mando episodes that I only watched once because I got enough of the um, analysis from either being on shows, talking to people, or or reading the Twitter analysis. Sure. Um, but. Uh, I don't know. There's something about this show that makes me want to watch the episode again pretty quickly. And I really want Mm -hmm. to dig into it. And I think it's because the way it's shot and I think it's the way it's, you know, there's not a lot of words, a a lot. So far, the show has not been expository from a, 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 a dialogue standpoint. It's been very much showing you the story, which is so different for the way stories are told now. So. Absolutely. I like this one from Brandon, Apprentice Ewok. Watch to consume, watch with headphones in a dark room, then watch to see Easter eggs is my process. And I love that. I love the idea of isolating. Yep. Yep. Um, You said not looking at your phone when a new thing drops, especially because of a certain group text that I'm in with three of my greatest Star Wars (laughs) podcasting friends. When I get up on Wednesday morning and my process is uh, the first episode I did stay up, but this week, um, I got up and watched it at 5.30. I'm on Central Time because my oldest daughter is my Star Wars person. Hmm. So I wake her up before school and she and I make a cup of coffee and we watch it together before we have to get everybody else up and ready for school. So that's <laughs> one special because she and I have that moment to be together. But when I get up on those moments, I don't flip my phone over because Pete's now ahead of me and you usually have seen it by the time <laughs> yeah, I've gotten to it. It's so, true. It's um, true. But yeah, but I like that, Brandon. That's a great way to go. So, well, that's, that is great. Well, Hey, that, uh, I think that kind of wraps it up for the first return episode of streaming star Wars. Nick, how'd you feel about it? How'd it go? What'd you think? I had a blast and I can't, I'm ready for it to be next Friday. Actually, I'm ready for it to be next Wednesday. So we can get episode (laughs) three and then I'm ready for it to be next Friday. So we can turn around and do this again. And I do want to throw another shout out to the chat. Um, there's too many of you to name. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this. This is why we love doing this show 
is your commentary, your feedback, you know, even if it's about my beard, um, <laughs> it's important and it's valuable. And um, we're just glad for y'all to be here. So thanks for hanging out. And we can't wait to hang out and do this again with you guys next Friday. Absolutely. And hey, uh, if you are a, uh, you know, wanted to just sort of revisit the the fact that Around the Galaxy and Podcast the Wills are now together on the ATG cast stream. And if you become a patron, I hate to do the pitch, but I'm going to do it. If you become <laughs> a patron, um, you also get to join Nick and his guests and his guest list. I'm, I, I'm not going to reveal it, but he's got some amazing guests coming up. You're going to want to be a part of those conversations. And uh, so for as little as $3 a month, you can be in those shows. We are also, Nick and I are working out the details. We are going to make it so that patrons can be literally a part of streaming Star Wars on Absolutely. Friday nights, hanging out with us. Uh, we're figuring out the details. But if you're interested in being a patron, just go to uh, uh, patreon.com slash ATGcast or go to ATGcast.com and you'll find a link there. Also, if you're digging the cool little logo in the upper right hand corner with the different <laughs> different heads, we have uh, we've designed some T-shirts, um, which you can check out. I, I, uh, I you know, people call me a Disney shell, but I'm a horrible ATG cast shell. <laughs> I'm not good at that. But, uh, you know. It's one of those things where uh, if you if you dig it and you want to support the show, that would be fantastic. Well, and I'm going to cut you off for just a half a second. Please Pete's do. being a little more humble because Pete has a dramatic, awesome amount of design skills, graphic skills. We have gone back and forth this week, and every time he thought, okay, that's the last one, he's made another one. And if you've noticed in the top right corner of your screen, that live logo, which is currently an R2 unit, um, there's like, is there 10 of them, nine or 10 of them at this point? Yeah, I think so. Um, like yeah. There's Boba, there's Maul, there's a Tuscan, there's a Hut, there's R2, there's Boba, um, there's um, Andor, there's Ahsoka. There's so many, and they're all available on Tee Public. They're all available as T-shirts. Um, we'd love for you to grab your favorite one, favorite color, you know, whatever it is. But Pete has done a great job putting those together, and we'll get the link out for that after the show. Um, if you have a favorite character, there's probably a logo for it, just like that with <laughs> streaming Star Wars on it. So we want you to check it out. Absolutely. Well, Nick, this has been a blast. I look forward to talking to you next week. Uh, of course, I'll be talking to you way before then. But um, uh, this has been great. Next Friday, the 14th, we will That's be it. reviewing episode chapter three. Cheers, my friend. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Streaming Star Wars. If you had fun, please like, subscribe, share, rate, and review it. Make sure to check out our website at ATGcast.com and follow us on all your social media channels at ATGcast. If you had a lot of fun and like to become a supporter of the show through our Patreon program, visit patreon.com slash ATGcast. Hey, and make sure to head over to our website, ATGcast.com, for merch, information about the show, and older episodes. Streaming Star Wars is copyright 2022, Pete in the Seat Studios.